Let's start this video out with a little story that I want to tell you. I'm a big fan of antique shops and malls, and I like to go to swap meets. And there was one particular gentleman that I really enjoyed to go see because he was always had a good sense of humor. He was funny, always made me laugh. And I went in there one day, and I, was, I looked down at a certain item that was there. We won't say what the certain item was. I said, why would you have that in this antique shop? That is just insane. And he looked at me, and he says, Scott, I got to tell you, there is a, and I'll bleep this out, there is a rear end for every seat. He says, just because you don't like it and you're not impressed with that, believe me, somebody will come in here and they will be. Okay, so that's my little story time before we start the video. When I put my rear end in my Jeep, I want to be putting them on the product I got to show you coming up in this video. Stay tuned. Welcome to Team G503. I'm Scott Schiller for Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. In this video, as you know, we've already talked about, it's going to be about the seats. I was doing the series on the wiring, which is well underway, well filmed up, and I'm going to be producing those videos and putting them out, and I will make them titled and sequenced so you can follow step by step. But I got excited about something, and I had to do it. Got my package from Weeby Webbing out of Ohio. They are a fantastic company who makes canvas and cushions for military vehicles. And I got to tell you, I've been, I'm always skeptical about what I get in the mail. I, I know Mr. Pizzoverato who owns that. I've met him in person. And I, you know, yeah, they're all the same. I opened this box up. The first thing was the smell. The smell is yeah, canvas. If you either love it or you don't. Thus the story about the rear end for every seat. Some of us love it. Some of us don't. My wife does not. So I opened this box up and I see these beautiful cushions and these beautiful canvas pieces. And most importantly, I am so impressed with the hardware that came with this set. It is just awesome. And I'll tell you all about it in the video. I'm gonna be very, very technical about how we put these cushions on. It's not hard, you just have to take your time and be careful with, your, with what you're measuring and where you're placing things so you don't make any mistakes. All right, let's dive right into it. Pretty exciting day here at the Team G503 Garage and Studio. Got a package in the mail from Dave Pizzoferrato Enterprises, and they are out of Richmond, Ohio, www.odcloth.com, Weeby Webbing. And this is what I've got to show you in this video. We've got a nice brand new set of seat cushions and canvas. There's our backs for the front seat, lower pads. These seem really nice, they're firm. We've got the rear seat, upper and lower. Great quality products. This is what I am most impressed with, this little bag of hardware here. And I'll be showing you why this is so fantastic during the installation of these cushions and this canvas onto my seats. But I'm telling you, I've looked high and low for this, and here it is in my hands, and I'm really excited about it. Let's start with the driver's side frame here. And you'll notice it's got the hole there on the bottom, which would be two of them for the gas tank. And notice the five holes that are drilled into the back side of the lower pan here. Those are where you're going to fasten the tab that's on this cushion. Notice how the tab is towards the bottom and I'll show you how to measure those and set those in. Using a tailor's or seamstress's measure, it's cloth, I'm going to pull across here and I'm going to find the middle hole which would be at 9 inches and the measurement across the frame itself is 18 and that's going to be our starting point or our reference. I'm going to double check here just to make sure that the holes are the same and if you measure from the center the first hole to the right will be 3 and 5 16 and then the second one measuring from that hole also would be 6 and 11 16 it's the same going in both directions. The next step is going to be to measure the length of the tab on the back of the cushion. This one is at 16 inches, so my center is going to be at 8. The width of the tab is just about an inch long, so I'm going to go about a half inch in the center here and make a small dot with a marker. I'm going to show you here. There's our inch, and I'm just about dead on at a half inch. That's going to be our starting point for the other four holes. Here's the part where it gets a little bit dangerous. This is a carpenter's awl, and it's a very sharp one. You can pick them up at any hardware store. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to punch a hole through this thick canvas, and there's two layers of it. So start with the punch right there dead center on your tip and wiggle it back and forth, holding the canvas between your fingers. Make sure you have enough space so you're not going to nick yourself or poke that into your hand, because I promise you it will hurt. Push the awl down until you get to about the top of the awl, and you want to make yourself a little bit bigger hole than about an eighth of an inch. This will make it easy for you to add the fasteners in the next steps. Starting with that center hole, I'll take the measure out again and I will measure out my 3 and 5 16 and my 6 and 11 16 measurements on both sides and then use the awl again to punch the next four holes. Shown here, you start right there in the center, measure out, and again we'll take our magic marker and put the mark in at about a half an inch on the tab. That's about the center. 
Take your time doing these measurements because this is going to make the difference of whether your tab lays flat onto the bottom of the seat base or not. You don't want to get that bunched up and then you'll have problems with it in the future and you won't like the way it looks. Once you've got all four of your holes marked, then go ahead with the awl and make your consecutive four holes. Once you've got all four holes punched with your awl, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take some of these countersunk screws that came with the kit. Again, this hardware is fantastic and a grommet and I believe these appear to be blued and you'll set the screw inside the grommet as such and then insert it into the center hole. We're going to start at the center and we're going to work our way out to each side because that's going to like again that's going to keep our tab nice and flat on the back side of the seat pan. Install the remaining screws starting in the center as such and working your way out to the edges. Once they're all installed, flip the seat up and get it in a propped up in a comfortable position so you can install the washers and the nuts from the back side. This gets to be a little tedious. As you see here, they're kind of small and they've got to be placed in between that lip there on the pan. They'll go on nicely. The nuts are a little bit more difficult to put on because of that lip, but you just take your fingers and you'll hold them from the front side and they'll spin right on. Once you've got all five nuts on, then we'll go back now with a flathead screwdriver and a 3 8 inch wrench and we'll tighten everything down. I'll show you a little trick here that just helped me. I hold the screw top from the, with my finger from the front side and then I put a little pressure on it and I'm able to tighten these up almost fully tight until it spins a little bit. And that way it'll make it easier instead of sitting there with a screwdriver trying to push on this. Once it gets snug you can just come around the back side with the screwdriver and tighten them down. Here you see I've got all my screw heads lined up or clocked in a vertical position to the back side of the tab. That's just my personal preference and I think it looks nice. You can see they're wonderfully made in these fasteners. I can't say enough about them. All right, the next part we're going to do here is we're going to put our pad across the top. That's the back top side. If you notice, I've got split back seats here. Uh, reproductions and some other ones are not going to have that little indent, which makes me have a little advantage because I know the center point already. But what I'm going to do now is measure the entire tube on the back side of the frame from the welds and the cr cross support to find a center if I did not know where the center was by these being split back seats you what I mean here. I've got that tab of that measure sitting on the back side of that crossbar where it's welded and pulled it across the top and I'm coming up with exactly 41 inches from weld to weld and that spot there on the split back is just about dead on there at 20 and a half inches. So that's going to be my center point. If you don't have the split back you can measure up at 20 and a half inches and make yourself just a little pencil marker or a magic marker mark. That's going to be covered by the actual canvas itself so it really won't make a difference if you make a mark there. You will need the center point as a reference. Okay, now we're going to take our tape measure and starting right from the center mark there, we're going to measure out and the first hole is at 2 and 5 sixteenths and the second hole is at 5 and 11 sixteenths. Those holes are going to be the same from the center going in the opposite direction. Next, we'll measure the holes that are on the sides of the tubes on the frame and if you start right there at the weld where that bracket meets the corner there, put your tape right there, the first measurement is going to be 3 quarters of an inch up, then 5 and 3 sixteenths, and then 9 and a half. It is the same on both sides of the frame. The top part of the cushion is going to be a little bit more difficult than the bottom because there's three edges that we're dealing with here with fasteners that are going to go to the tubes and you really want to get those nice and aligned so your back cushion won't be all crinkled up. The first thing we're going to do is measure the top tab and notice how it's facing down towards my workbench as that's what's going to sit on the frame. I'm going to measure over and find the center. In this case it's just about six and three quarters inches and I'm going to put just a little stick pin in there just to give myself a reference about three quarters of an inch on the inside of the tab. These tabs are a little longer than they are on the bottom of the seat frame. Then we'll measure from that stick pin and we'll measure out our measurements that were 2 and 5 sixteenths and 5 and 11 sixteenths on both sides. We'll put a mark with a magic marker just as we did with the lower cushion and then we'll go back and punch our holes in with the awl when everything is all laid out. I like to start with the back tab because that's the one that's going to be the most important on the top there. You can stretch the sides kind of that back top tab has to be really nice and laid out right. So make sure you've got your marks exactly where they need to be. Remember that crossbar that we measured from when we were doing our center measurement? Well that's almost exactly where that tab is going to start. Make sure that you're measuring from the bottom of the tab as the square side of the cushion is going to be the lower side not the top of the radius. And those marks again on the side, if you can, we'll go back for reference, are at three quarters, five and three sixteenths, and nine and a half. Again, the measurement to the center of this tab is approximately three quarters of an inch. We'll flip the cushion over and make the same marks on the other side. We're going to use the awl just like we did with the lower cushion. Again, please be careful when you're making these holes and make sure your fingers are far enough apart where you're not going to stick yourself as you punch out all these holes. There's quite a few of them to do. Be very careful with that tool. 
Once we get all our holes punched in the top seat canvas there, I'll go around here and I'll show you how I did it. I made these holes just a little bit bigger than I made the ones on the bottom because the screws I'm about to show you are just a little bit wider in diameter and it seemed to help. Here we go again with our grommet. Now, this is the piece I love the best and I believe that these are parkerized and they look absolutely fantastic. They're just a slotted head screw. It's a little tapered at the top but they just fit in there so perfectly and they look so nice with the paint. I love those fasteners. I'm going to start here, which would be to my right, and just line the screw up and then using a slotted screwdriver, I'm not going to tighten these completely. I'm just going to run them down about two or three threads. That will enable me, if I need to, to stretch the canvas a little bit back and forth if I need to. Again, I want this top absolutely perfect and straight so the other holes line up as we do them down the sides. Once you get all four of your screws and your grommets, then we're going to go ahead, again, just make sure this is nice and taut and straight. Notice how flat that is. And then I'm going to start with the inner two screws, and I'm going to go ahead with my fingers, hold the canvas in place so it doesn't twist with the screw. And then I'm going to go ahead and tighten down on that just till it tightens. You don't want to force it. You don't want to squish the grommet. Again, go to the inside one, keeping your canvas all nice and straight on the top of that frame. After you get the two on the inside tight, then you can go to the outside and tighten the outside too, and everything should come out nice and flush and then we'll move to the sides and then we'll pull the outside canvas and the cushion tight to the frame. Here's a little trick that's going to make for a nice job. You see there the holes do line up however when we go to pull it down there because of the curvature of the seat and because how new this canvas is it's going to be a tight fit. So we're going to use our awl and insert it in the hole and then insert it into the hole of the frame and just give it a little pull and line it up. Once that's lined up hold the canvas tight with your thumb and then we'll insert a screw and a grommet. It's nice to have your fasteners right there at your fingertips, so keep them close, but not close enough where you're going to knock them on the floor. Then we'll take a slotted screwdriver, and again, we're not going to tighten these all the way down. Just snug them up so we'll be able to manipulate this canvas as we do the next two holes. Use the same method with the awl to install the next two consecutive in an order. Go in order now. And then once all three are on, then we can go back now and we can tighten them. Remember, hold the canvas flush as you tighten these screws so it doesn't grab and twist your canvas. Otherwise, you'll end up with a big mess. You can manipulate this with your fingers. Just try to keep everything as flat and flush to that frame as you can. It'll make for a really nice job. Repeat the process on the opposite side of frame and you'll find out your seat cushion is nice and tight. Here I'll show you the finished product. You notice here the front side of the lower cushion fits perfectly and we can lift that up to access our areas for our gas tank and our filler tubes. On the sides here we're all tightened up on the side and we're across the top. The stitching on these is absolutely fantastic. So I will call the driver's side seat is done for now and I'll show you the passengers next. The passenger side frame is the width and the height are just about the same and the whole locations look about the same to me but there's a big difference in the front side here. If you notice where the legs are this is hinged and underneath there's footman loops. That's to stow the soft top. So it's going to be just about the same way we did the first one. It's just going to be a little bit more difficult to hold in place because those legs aren't as large and allow you to stand the seat up and down as you work on it. I'll go ahead and pull the tape measure across here just to verify that the measurements are the same as the front seat and if you see here as I pull the tape across I'm not going to get a lot into this because I see right here that they are and then we're going to measure the top side just to make sure that those measurements are the same as I gave you for the front seat and indeed they are so you can use those exact measurements on your passenger side seat as well. I'll show you a picture here of the finished product after I installed the cushions and the canvas onto the passenger seat and you can hear the side view here. They came out fantastic. Next, we'll move on to the rear seat, the one that's foldable, and I need to get a center measurement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure over here to the cross member because I'm missing a couple holes on this one. I'm going to show you how to drill them in a second. So right here at the top of the crossbar here in the back of the seat, I'm going to measure from point to point on the top radius and get a center measurement. My overall measurement at that location is 39 and a quarter inches, so the center hole is at 19 and an eighth. And then measuring from center hole, you would measure 7 and a quarter inches for the first hole and 6 and 11 sixteenths from that hole to the one that I'm missing on the radius. And I'm going to show you how to punch and drill these as if you had a reproduction seat that did not have any holes drilled in it or if you had an original seat that somebody decided to weld the holes up in. The measurements going in the opposite direction are exactly the same. I am missing the two holes on both sides of my radiuses of the rear seat, so I've put a mark there, the magic marker, when I measured it out, and I'll use a small ball peen hammer and a center punch to make a mark right on that mark that I made, so when I use the drill, it won't slip and damage my paint and or put the drill hole in the wrong spot. Just give it a simple tap, and that should be enough to give you a little divot 
to insert your 9 64 drill bit. That seems to be the perfect size. And make sure when you're drilling into that radius that you're doing so at a 90 degree angle as this. It won't take much to drill through there. Be careful not to go through the opposite side of the tube. I'll repeat the same process on the opposite radius of the seat frame. We'll take our tape measure here, and this has got a little radius on it, so you've got to start from the outside of the tab, and then just take it across to the other tab and get yourself a center measurement, and we'll do the same thing we did with the other cushions by putting a pin in the center and then measuring out and punching our holes. Each one of those five holes is going to receive a grommet and a screw just like we did on the backs of the other seats. And you'll want to start in the center and work your way out to the end. So in the center, and then we'll work to each side and then the radiuses and that'll keep that nice tab on the top as tight as we can possibly get it. Install the pad facing forward with the little tabs facing away so they can be brought back underneath the side of the seat. I've got all the fasteners installed here, but I do not have them completely tight yet. They're just snug. I need to have a little room because I need to fold this tab underneath the frame of the seat and make sure that that fits nice and snug before I tighten the top ones. I'm going to take now and measure the center of this because my holes on my frame are way off far to the left side and the right side. We'll measure the tab here, and the tab itself is at the point here I'm showing you is two inches, and this is inch and a half. So I'm going to make a hole at one inch in and three quarters of an inch up from the back side of the tabs I'll show you here. That should fall right into the center of the lower frame rail and make for a nice fastening location. Make our mark, double check it twice, and then we'll go ahead and punch it with the awl. After the hole's punched, I'm actually going to use it to make the location in my lower frame where I need to drill a hole for my fasteners. But first, when you do this tab, you don't want to push it all the way down and make a ripple here in your canvas. You just want to hold the canvas to the back side of the seat and then fold the tab in. Once you've got that tab folded in, you can take your awl, insert it through the hole, and just make a little scratch on the frame where we need to drill the holes. I used the same 964 drill bit at a square angle to make the hole, and now you'll point down here, you can see where I drilled my new one. The first one was way off, and I missed that somehow when I was restoring the seat, and, but it's okay, the tab will cover that, and I'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Using a grommet and a screw, just as previously in the cushions, we'll fold that tab back and insert the screw, and then fasten it to the back side of the frame using a slotted screwdriver. On the two lower tabs, I am going to go ahead and fasten these tightly just to secure this, and then I'll go back to the top side, flip the seat up, and then tighten the fasteners exactly like we did from the center out, making them fully snug. As you see here, it looks fantastic. Everything's all secure, and you'll have a little bit of the tab sticking out of the back. That's absolutely okay. Last but not least is our lower seat cushion. I've already got it in the frame here because you'll want to put it in and tuck it in the back side of that pan before you make any measurements or adjustments. You see this back side of the pan, it fits exactly inside there. And if you look here, you're going to see that they've got a tab. It's double over. That's really thick. There's a fatter side and a thinner side, I will call it. You want the fatter side towards the top. Take the lip of the canvas and roll it down as tight as you can with your hand. And that's how we're going to pull a measurement to see where the grommets go as they will go underneath that tab in the front there so you can flip the seat cushion up and down. The positioning of these five grommets and screws is critical as to the positioning of this particular cushion as you want to fold in and out without any trouble. I'll go ahead now and I'll take a tape measure and I'm, I've got the holes that are already pre-drilled in there there but I want to double check them to make sure they're going to work. So I'm going to pull a tape measure across from rail to rail. I apologize for my arms getting in the way here, it was the only way to measure this length, but the measurement came out at 32 inches, which is going to give me the center measurement of 16 inches. The measurements from that center hole are 5 and 7 eighths and 10 and 13 sixteenths on either side. I can't fit the whole seat frame in here and give you detail, so what I'll do is I'll show you this in a different angle here so you can see how the holes go as they move towards the radius. Now remember, we've got to set that tab inside that frame, and as I notice as I folded it back over, it touches the crease right here in the pan almost perfectly. So I'll measure from the crease, and I'll get my measurement, just double check that they're all the same, and they're all measuring out at three quarters of an inch, again, from the crease in the bottom of the pan. Now we'll fold this over again. Notice here now the most small side of the cushion there is towards the bottom. You want to fold that backwards. These are marked with Weeby Webbing's logo on the bottom, so you can use that as a reference too. But the top side is thicker than the bottom as shown here. So we're going to go ahead and fold this along the line now and measure from that bottom of the crease three quarters of an inch on our mark as we transpose those same measurements just as we've done with the previous seats. For the last time in the installation, we'll find the center again of that tab, and then we'll use a stick pin just to keep the center perfectly because this is really going to count when you fold this seat back into that frame. 
We'll use the tape again and measure in exactly three quarters of an inch and make a mark with our magic marker. And then we'll take the measurements out both sides. I'll give them to you once again. The measurements from the center on the lower cushion are five and seven eighths and 10 and 13 sixteenths from the center. We'll go ahead and make the marks and then punch our holes through from the back side there with the awl. Once we get all the holes punched through, we'll go ahead and we'll take our cushion and again, we'll line it up. The bottom side is going to be flipped over into the frame like I'm showing you here. So remember that when you put those fasteners in. We're going to install our last five grommets and screws. And then what we're going to do now is flip this cushion the backwards way of what it should be. I've got it in there now of how it will be. We'll start at the middle and work our way to the two middles and the outsides just as previous to keep it nice and tight. Okay, so I've got the cushion flipped around now. Again, I'm going to start in the middle and work my way to the inner two, left and right, and an outer two holding that canvas as snugly as I can and as flat as I can to that frame. Once you get everything all tightened up, that bottom tab should be nice and flush to that outside rail there. You've got all five of the fasteners in, and this is where it's going to get really cool, and you're going to see if we did it right or not, is when we flip it backwards, it should fit exactly into, or almost as close as you can, to that back rail. I want to show you this now, as I'm pushing this back in here, just a nice tight fit, it's exactly how it should be, and you'll see these ripples in there. When it was shipped, it was folded in half, and those will come out when the Jeep gets outside in the sun, I guarantee you. Thanks again to Weeby Webbing and Dave Pizzaferrato Enterprises for the fantastic products. Thank you for watching. I hope that helped you out as you see step by step there. When I first got those seat frames, I got to tell you, they were full of holes, full of rust. The pans were popped off. A lot of welding to get those back. I believe those holes from what I've researched are correct. You may have a slight variation there. Thus is what I was saying in the video. Make sure you do pull that tape for yourself before you go sticking any holes or making any marks on that canvas. Again, Weeby Webbing, thank you so much for the quality products and those fasteners. I will not stop talking about those fasteners. They're fantastic. All right, my friends, if you'd like to subscribe, we're doing the 1943 Willis MB because we're going to be really rolling along now. I got the tub back on the chassis. I've got a lot of the wiring done. I've got some of the fuel lines in, and I'm going to be producing these videos. So, you know, sign up and subscribe, and, and also click that little bell down there in the bottom because you'll be notified when we put the new videos out. Until next time, my friends, keep it seat <laughs> and happy jeeping.